Hello, am I audible? Can everyone hear me? Very good evening to all of you, and a warm welcome to the class. So, how are you all doing? Good evening, Anna. Akshata Rajiv. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, let's start with the class. So, before we move ahead, I would like to just remind you that uh, in the previous class of economics, we did about the theory of demand. Do you remember that theory of demand? Everybody, do you remember who all were there in that class? We did about the law of demand. So, so anyone just uh, repeat what we did in that, the law of demand. Good evening Prabha, welcome to class. I am asking about the law of demand which we did in the previous class. Previous economic session, we studied about the law of demand. So, I am asking about that. Uh, can uh, anyone just repeat what the law of demand says? Asya, Akshita, Rajiv, Anas, Prabha. Prabha, do you remember the law of demand? It is the basic law of economics. What does it tell us? Okay, when the price increases, the quantity of uh, specific goods reduced subject to all factors remaining the same. Mm, okay, uh, in this definition, Rajiv, this Specific word is not correct. It is not only for specific goods. It is with most of the goods. Uh, what is the statement of the demand in general terms is when if the price of a commodity increases, its demand decreases and if the price of the commodity decreases, its demand increases. Okay. So, it and it assumes that many things remain the same. So, those other things are like the consumer's taste and preference. The price of the related goods, price of the substitutes, then the income of the consumer remains the same. There is no change in the income. Okay? Because if the income will increase, he can afford a costlier good. But we assume that the income remains the same throughout the period of consideration. Okay. So, that's, that was the law of demand. Now, today we are going to study about the law of diminishing marginal utility. So, anyone knows about it? Law of diminishing marginal utility? Law of diminishing marginal utility. Okay, Prabha, you have studied this topic before. Anyone else? Any idea? When reduction, production increases, the cost of production increases for a particular point onwards. That is law of diminishing returns. Okay, Rajiv. And law, that is related to the production and cost. Right now, what we are going to study is that is about the consumer behavior. Okay. This theory is a part of consumer behavior. Like in economics, the theories are divided into different sections. If we talk about the theory of demand, the theory of supply, they are the uh, theory of market behavior. The one which we are going to do today, that is the law of diminishing marginal utility analysis. This is the law, this is an example of consumer choice and behavior. Okay. This law is totally based on the um, behavior of the consumer who is consuming a product and what you said the production increases the cost of production increases that is the production theory the cost of production theory that we are not discussing today 
So there are many uh, new entries: Rami, Sanubar, Muhammad, Saiful, and Monachin. Good evening and welcome to class. Today we are discussing about the law of diminishing marginal utility. So I was just asking uh, the students that uh, anyone has any idea about it. So uh, the new people who have entered right now, can you just tell what is this law of diminishing marginal utility? Anyone? Rami, Kalubar, Mohammed, Saiful, Monachin, out of you people. <laughs> okay, I'll just start. This, um, when cost reduces, demand will not increase after some point. No, Raji. No, 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 no. This is not what this theory says. This is a law which tells us about the consumer behavior and this is a normal uh, human tendency that uh, once we get, uh, once we consume something, we get a lot of satisfaction by consuming it. Suppose we are very very um, hungry and uh, sorry we are very thirsty. So um, it is the period of May and June and uh, one day you are out for job and you are very thirsty. So uh, once you get to uh, get, get to a place where you can get water so you will purchase the first bottle of mineral water so after drinking the first glass from that uh, uh, bottle uh, uh, how much satisfaction are you going to get we can say you may get 10 on 10 the satisfaction 10 on 10 okay then after the second glass, when once you drink the second glass, you might get the satisfaction equal to 8 uh, on 10. Then after the third glass, it may just uh, be 5 to 10. Okay. Are you all getting it? Everyone? Yes, it gradually it diminishes Prabha, exactly. So, diminishing means uh, going down, reducing. Marginal is the, uh, marginal is the word that is used when we talk with reference to one additional unit. Then we use the word marginal. It will be more clear once we go to the PPT. And utility is the satisfaction. So, this law basically tells us that uh, the satisfaction which we are going to derive after consuming every additional unit of a product will go on diminishing okay so this is the law of diminishing marginal utility so we will now discuss this one only so you can see this is the topic for today now the first thing is what is utility utility refers to the satisfying property of a product if you talk with reference to the product then it is the satisfying capacity or the satisfying power which a product gives to the consumer that is product uh, that is utility then from the uh, point of view of the consumer it is the psychological feeling of satisfaction or happiness or well-being or benefit derived by the consumer by the consumption of certain units of a good or service at a certain point of time. Okay. Yes, Sunil, good evening. How are you? Welcome to class. Today we are discussing about the law of diminishing marginal utility. Okay. So everyone, did you get this? The meaning of utility from both aspects? Shiful Islam, welcome to class. Students are still uh, coming in. So I'll just take a halt of one minute so that everyone can uh, just join. Good evening, Shiful. Welcome to class. I think I can resume now. So um, I, I just uh, told you about this uh, utility. So did you all understand the meaning of utility? Utility in simple 
word means the satisfaction which we get by the consumption of a product okay is are these two things clear to everybody asya akshita rajiv anas prabha sanubar saiful mohammanachin mohammad sunil shiful okay now there are two approaches to measure the utility one is the cardinal and the second is ordinal if you all have studied in mathematics there are cardinal numbers and there are ordinal numbers as well so cardinal numbers are the number which we talk about in general like 1 2 3 4 5 6 that those are cardinal numbers and ordinal is when you rank thing according in the order of your preference so like you say um pizza is my first preference chowmin is my second preference and pav bhaji is my third preference so that is ordinal utility you are not saying 1 2 3 you are saying um, uh, you are ranking it as per your preference that is ordinal cardinal is when you assign a number something that is concretely measured like i say by uh, consuming one plate of chowmin i get a cardinal utility of 15 so 15 is a concrete amount and it's measurable it's a number by consuming one plate of chola bhatura i get utility of 12 so that is again a cardinal unit it's measurable and ordinal is like i like chowmin more than chola bhatura so that is ordinal you are ranking it okay you are giving it a position you are not able to measure the mm, the units in terms of numbers all right clear to everybody cardinal concept and ordinal concept of utility only sunil and rajiv are saying yes what about others did you get it anyone is having any doubt cardinal and ordinal utility i explain again no it's not cardinal it's cardinal prabha cardinal cardinal is uh, when you can measure it in terms of numbers like i say 1 5 9 20 30 four this is uh, cardinal okay and ordinal is when you rank it when you say um second preference then you say fourth preference you say first preference this is ordinal going to movie is my first preference having dinner outside is my second preference and uh then going to an amusement park is my third preference yes roman numbers that is uh, we can say that is ordinal utility ranking of the thing as per the uh, utility it holds for us or in simple terms as per the satisfaction which we get from them so now utility is of two types total and marginal total utility is means the total utility or the total satisfaction which you get from the consumption of a unit of a product and marginal is the addition to the existing satisfaction which you are getting because of the consumption of one extra unit like suppose after consuming fifth unit you are getting a satisfaction of 8 okay and after consuming the sixth unit you are getting a satisfaction of 10 so in this case the marginal utility is how much the marginal utility is 2 okay how you, how you got this 2 you got this 2 by uh, uh, dividing uh, sorry by subtracting this uh, 8 from number 10 the, uh, the utility of the fifth unit is 8 and the sixth unit is 10 and the difference between the two is the marginal utility 
all right did you get it okay so what is the total unit of six unit total utility of the six unit it is 10 and what is the marginal utility of the six unit it is 2 all right so the behavior of the consumer is dependent on the marginal unit it is not dependent on the total it depends on the marginal satisfaction which we are getting after consuming every additional unit now suppose you take up the seventh unit of the same unit if i say banana you take the seventh banana and now the satisfaction which you are getting is 8 uh, sorry you may say, say 10 then af after uh, consuming the eighth unit you are getting a satisfaction of 8 so now in this case for the seventh unit the total utility is 10 but the marginal utility is what marginal utility for the seventh unit prabha says three is that right raji says zero monachan says zero anyone else yes the correct answer is zero yeah it's zero the z is zero because the utility of the previous unit that is the sixth unit was 10 and the seventh unit is also 10. So when you subtract this 10 from 10, you are going to get a 0. It means the seventh unit is not giving us any satisfaction. So it's better to stop the consumption at sixth unit. Okay. Now what about this one, the eighth unit? What is the total uh, utility of 8? It's 8. And the marginal utility is minus 2. It is 8 minus 10. It is giving us 8 unit satisfaction and the previous was giving us 10. So we will subtract 8 from 10 and we are going to get the answer minus 2. Yes, Rajiv and Monachin. <coughs> so now let's just see the definition of total utility. Sum of utility derived by the consumer from multiple units consumed at a point or over a period of time. This is the definition for that. So consumer consumes 3 units of X and derives the utility as utility 1, 2, 3 and utility 4. So all these are, uh, the sum of all these is the total utility. Okay. Now if I talk about this example, the example which I was giving. If I say what is the total utility in this case, what is the answer? The total utility for this one, uh, this example, 5, 6, 7 and 8 units. What is the total utility in this case? Monitoring 26. It's 36. Yes, Rajiv, it's 36. It is 8 plus 10 plus 10 plus 8. That is 36. So, it's U1 plus U2 plus U3. That's total. Now, total utility in terms of definition, it is the total satisfaction of wants and needs obtained from the consumption of goods and services. Now, based on the presumption that the amount of utility generated from the consumption of a good can be explicitly measured. Means, when we talk about the, uh, the law of diminishing marginal utility or we, when, we, when we go to purchase something from the market, what we uh, consider is the cardinal utility of that thing to us. Prabha, you can't see? What can't you see? Now can you see, Prabha? Prabha, everything is visible to you now? We are on the slide of total utility. Okay, just wait Prabha. Now? No. So what you can do is you can just log out and log in again. That, is, that will help probably because others can see it. 
So this is about total utility. Now next we go to can you see now marginal utility is written on the slide Prabha. Marginal utility. The next one. So the uh, marginal utility in terms of definition is the change in total utility derived from one additional unit of consumption. Like jumping from 6 to 7th unit, the utility which we are getting, the extra utility, the extra satisfaction, that is the marginal utility. So uh, how can we calculate the marginal utility? It can be calculated as total utility divided by the number of, uh, the number of extra unit. Now this is the law. It says as the quantity consumed of a commodity goes on increasing, the utility derived from each successive unit goes on diminishing. Consumption of all other commodities remaining the same. This is an assumption of the law. In economics, every law is based on certain assumptions. So this is the assumption for this particular law. It assumes that the other things remain the same. And only we, we only there is a change in the quantity in question. Uh, I have a new student, Majo. Majo Popadi Jos. Good evening and welcome to class. Is it your first class? Yes, actually you should be. You are late by uh, for 20 minutes. More than 20 minutes. Yeah. Is it your first class? Okay. So welcome to class. This is the class of managerial economics. And today we are discussing about the law of diminishing marginal utility. It's a law based on the consumer. Uh, it is a law which governs the consumer behavior as far as consumption of commodities is concerned. Okay, so we are, we have discussed a lot part, so now we are just moving ahead. You have to catch up and you can see the recording to um, get through the previous part. Alright? Okay, so now now we will see, we can see a chart, uh, the, sorry, a table, a schedule is there which is showing the total as well as marginal utility for the product. You can see this is about commodity X. Let us assume it is, uh, it is an apple, so uh, quantity, uh, commodity X. So first unit, total utility is 30 and marginal is 30. Actually, the marginal utility and total utility will be same for the first unit. And it can be zero in fact. The first unit does not have any marginal utility. It should be zero. It shouldn't be 30. Okay. Am I right? This should be zero or 30? Yes, it should be zero because the first unit is not giving us any marginal utility, it's giving just total. Then the first, second one, 50 is the total utility and marginal is 50 minus 30, that is 20. For the third, it is 60 and 60 minus 50, that is 10. 10 is the marginal utility. For next, 65 and 60, so it is 65 minus 60, that is 5. For the fifth one, it's 60 minus 65, so it's minus 5. And the sixth one, it's minus 15. So marginal utility is now going on decreasing. So this is the nature of marginal utility. If you are going to plot it on a graph paper, we will get a curve in which the marginal utility will be like this. I'll just show you. Like suppose marginal utility will start from this point, it will be 0 for the first unit, then it will 
increase increase then it will become a little stagnant and then it will start declining okay if you plot it this will be the shape of the marginal utility curve and if we talk about total utility curve the total utility curve will be uh, it will be also somewhat like this only okay so did you all get it why it is having this shape actually it has not been drawn properly it will have a shape like this reverse u so uh, did you understand why is it so because initially the marginal utility is increasing then it is becoming a little constant and then it is going down that is why fine so far everything is clear to everybody okay anyone has any doubt should i go ahead so you can just see now the graph um actually that this assumption is wrong it cannot be 30 at the first place it should have been zero and the curve should have started from here so for zero for the first unit it will be zero for the second unit it would be 20 so it should be here go on declining like this 10 and then it will be for the fourth unit it will be 5 then minus 5 and then minus 15 okay so it can be negative also so this is how it will uh, this the curve will look like and the total utility will be like this only is it clear everybody the plotting of the graph So you can see in the example. Suppose you have one ice cream, so you feel ecstatic. Now, what is the meaning of this one? This word, ecstatic. Ecstatic is extremely happy. Means when your happiness no no bounds, it's limitless. That is ecstatic. So you will feel very happy. when you go for second unit you will you will still feel ecstatic it is it is for a small kid one who is very fond of eating ice cream and all then second you will feel ecstatic the third you will feel very happy now the degree has gone down you can see now the smiley has 
change to that of a happy one. Then fourth, you feel happy, not very happy. Now you are just happy. Then fifth, still you are happy. Then sixth, now you are not so happy. The curve is a straight line now. The seventh, you are not at all happy because already uh, your marginal utility has already gone down. It's, it has started declining. The total utility as well as the marginal utility. Now look at the eighth one. It's going to make you feel sick. So that's not at all something that you want. Okay. So this is um, this is a table that will make this law clear. For the first ice cream, like it's 20 uh, utility, then total utility is 32. So you can calculate the marginal utility. It will be 32 minus 20. This will be 40 minus 32. 44 minus 4. Then 45 minus 44. That is 1. Then for the sixth unit, it will be the same. Uh, the marginal and the total utility. Then for the seventh one, it will be minus three, and for the eighth one, it will be minus minus five. Forty minus. Actually, it should be forty minus forty-two, not forty-five. It's a mistake here. It should have been minus two. First should be zero. It should be zero. Okay. Now, what are the assumptions of this law? It says, uh, as as for the law, as the law of demand, this is also a law which is based on certain assumptions. The first is that the unit of the product is standard. It can be like cup of tea, bottle of cold drink, one apple, one banana one cake, one pastry, anything, something that is measurable. Then no small units are consumed. Consumer's taste and preference remains the same. And there must be continuity at consumption. This, what does this mean, this one? How do you pronounce it? How is this pronounced? Yes, Renan, it's delta. It's delta T. Delta T means the change in time. So, ch change in time means the time period which is under consideration. It should be a very short time period. It shouldn't be a long one. The mental condition of the consumer remains the, it remains normal. That is a very um, absurd type of an assumption. Now, this law is not applicable. There are certain exceptions. In case of certain commodities, first in case of intoxicants, people who are used to drinking and who cherish drinking uh, liquor and all, for them, the law of diminishing marginal utility will not hold good. Then rare collection, like someone is having a rare collection of uh, stamps, so that person is going to uh, get more and more utility by uh, having more and more stamps or coins or whatever, some antique or something, his utility will keep on increasing. Then application to money. Obviously, everybody wants more and more money. There is no end to it. So we also want more and more. Now the next is, so to conclude, we can say that the law of diminishing utility, like other laws of economics, is simply a statement of tendency and it holds good provided other factors remain constant. Okay? So now what I'll do is, there's a small video on the law of diminishing marginal utility. You can just watch it and then there is a small uh, exercise which we can do. Okay? First you can watch the video. Is that fine?
to his mother a very innocent question. Mom, a very new thing happened to me in yesterday's party. There were free pastries available and my friend and myself had a bet on who can eat more pastries. I thought that I will certainly win this bet because as you know I have a sweet tooth for pastries. However, things went in a different way. I was excited before I started. Enjoyed the initial few, but over a period of time my excitement went down. And after some time I started hating the pastries. Does your economics have an answer for this behavior of mine? Well, certainly yes. And it's very simple and intuitive to understand. Let's recapitulate the experience you got there. Let's first look at the first pastry you consumed. You loved the pastry because you derived satisfaction out of it. A feeling of overall sense of well-being. Just like pastries, you might derive certain satisfaction out of eating, say, cookies or a burger. and depending on your constitution you may derive different amount of satisfaction out of these different things let's define a concept of utility that measures the amount of satisfaction you get by eating these things knowing you i am sure you derive maximum satisfaction out of pastry as compared to burger or a cookie let's say You derive 10 units of satisfaction from eating pastry, 5 units of satisfaction by eating cookies, and 8 units of satisfaction by eating a burger when you are hungry. So, if you eat all of these, your total utility by eating all of these would be 10 plus 5 plus 8, which is equal to 23. There is another concept called marginal utility which comes into effect when you eat more of the same which was the case in your binge at the party marginal utility signifies the additional utilities or units of satisfaction you derive when you eat additional unit of the same product let's replay how it went with you in the party with the introduction of the utility and marginal utility concepts you loved pastry number 1 because you were hungry and the pastry really hit the spot you were hungry and had an appetite for sweets hence it was very fulfilling it added 10 satisfaction units to your overall sense of well-being so the total utility you consumed was 10 and the marginal utility was also 10 because it was your first piece pastry number 2 was good but not as good as pastry number 1 because your hunger and need for sweets was already partly fulfilled so second pastry added a little less that is say 8 units to your overall sense of well-being so the total utility increased to 18 10 8 8 but the marginal utility the incremental utility derived by eating the additional piece of the same decreased from 10 to 8 pastry number 3 still good but you started to fill up so it adds only 5 units to the sense of well-being so total utility now is 23 18 5 but the marginal utility decreased to 5 from 8 pastry number 4 your stomach was now full and this pastry added much less to your overall sense of well-being so it adds only 2 to your overall satisfaction level total utility 25 marginal utility 2 till this stage There is an increment in the overall satisfaction level with every addition eat as the total utility is increasing. However, please notice that the marginal utility decreased over time. 
Pastry number five did not make you any happier, so there is no incremental increase in satisfaction level. Total utility remained the same as twenty five. Marginal utility, therefore, however, decreased to zero. Pastry number six. You feel reluctant to eat more because you are fed up of it, and you hate it by now. By eating it, you are actually decreasing your sense of happiness. Here, the marginal utility is negative, say minus three, due to which. Total utility now decreased to twenty-two. Now, yes, you had reached a stage where incremental eating led to a decrease in your overall happiness. Let's summarize it in the table below. As can be seen, when the same product and service is consumed again and again, total utility increases initially. the incremental increase in the utility that is marginal utility generally decreases over time beyond a point the marginal utility becomes negative this is when the total utility starts decreasing to summarize if you give identical units of same good continuously to someone each units will add less and less to the amount of happiness and overall sense of well-being and the happiness would start reducing after the threshold is reached this behavior is known as the law of diminishing marginal utility hmm got it so after pastry 5 any additional pastry reduces my overall utility level going back to my experience actually i was feeling not seated after pastry 5 even Well, I went to the sixth and the seventh pastry. Interesting. Yes. So the consumption should have stopped after pastry five, because you were in fact losing your happiness after pastry five. In fact, you would have felt good by stopping even at pastry three or four, and shifted to something else. which had a higher utility than pastry as a rule consumption needs to stop where marginal utility is equal to zero so we have learned if only identical successive quantity of a good is consumed the law of diminishing marginal utility will hold which will result in falling utility from every additional unit consumed of course a model such as this with one product and no price and income constraints is not entirely realistic however this is the first step towards understanding the critical concepts ahead
So did you all uh, enjoy the video? Yeah, it was explained in very simple words. It was very informative. So now what we can do is, uh, there's a small quiz type of a thing which we can solve together. Okay. I'll just first adjust the resolution so that it's visible to everybody. Now everyone can see properly. Uh, no, I think some words are not visible. Just a second. It's better now. All right. So now you can see there are certain questions and uh, they are having options. You have to choose the right one. So let us start with the first one. Which of the following best expresses the law of diminishing marginal utility? You have to tell that. You read your, uh, read everybody and then uh, write your answers in the chat box. Rajiv and Monachin says it's B. Asya, Akshita, Anas, Tanubar, Mohammed, Saiful, Muhammad, Sunil, Majo, Rinin, Rashid, Muhammad. What's your answer? It is B. Yes, it's B. It says the more a person consumes of a product, the smaller becomes the extra utility received as a result of consuming an additional unit. So in uh, these two are very close but the difference of this word extra, the extra utility or the extra satisfaction which we get that is the marginal satisfaction. It goes on decreasing with every additional unit. Now the next one, number two, sorry. Number two is, now there is a chart you can see and it says what is the marginal utility of the ch third chocolate bar to the consumer. The third one, third uh, unit, what is the marginal utility? Uh, Monison says C, C is number 8, Rajiv says it's 10. Sunil says C, that is 8, okay. What about others? You can just take your time and calculate. Rinin, Majo. Rashid, Muhammad, Rashid you are very late for the class, you join almost after half of the session, isn't it? Prabha, Akshita, what's your answer, Anas? Okay, you were busy with audit work. Alright. So means uh, this will uh, go on for a long period of time, means uh, you will be busy throughout the month or just for today. The answer is C. Yes Rajiv, the answer is C, that is 8. You can see uh, the extra utility is 27. Minus 19 because 27 is the total utility and from second unit it was 19. So 27 minus 19 that is 8 is the correct answer. Clear to everybody? Can we go to the next? Okay, now the third one is you can see, sorry. Third one. What is the marginal utility of the fifth chocolate bar? Fifth one. You have to tell. Yes, it's very simple. The answer is seven. Or answer is C. Seven. It's uh, fifth one. It's 42 minus 35. That is the seven. Now next is fourth one. Now fourth one says, same chart, it says, 
if the chocolate bars are dollar two each, so what is the marginal utility per dollar of the third chocolate bar? Marginal utility per dollar of the third chocolate bar. How are you going to solve this one? You know how you have to solve this. 8 into 2, 16 values. No. This 8 is the marginal utility. Isn't it? Yes. 8 is the marginal utility for the uh, product. And uh, it says, Renan's answer is correct. It is C. It says the cost of each chocolate is dollar two, and you have to calculate the marginal utility per dollar. Per dollar, so you will have to divide this eight by two to get the answer. That is four. Okay, so the answer is C. Four. Renan gave the right answer. Did you all understand? Now why are we talking about this thing, marginal utility per dollar? Because this per dollar is the concept which is used by the consumer in planning his purchasing. Uh, because uh, whatever consumer is going to purchase, it depends upon the satisfaction he is going to get after spending every extra penny on that particular product. So, uh, what actually this, uh, this, this system, uh, the law of, there is there is a law that, that is called the law of equi marginal utility. Okay, it is very similar to this one. The concept is the same, but this law says, the law of equi marginal utility says that the consumer will spend his money in such a fashion that he derives equal satisfaction from every unit which he is going to purchase. Okay, means his money is spent in such a way that the total utility which he is getting from the different units is the same. He may buy uh, one banana and one apple. He may buy two apples and one banana. He may buy three apples, no banana, whatever. But the thing is that the satisfaction which he is getting from all of these should be equal. That is the law of equi marginal utility and that is the main law which governs the behavior of the consumer as far as spending of money is concerned. So, uh, now first one. The utility maximization rule states that a consumer will choose to consume goods so that dash. You have any idea about this one? A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, or D? No? Yes, Renan and Monachin, the answer is correct. So this is, and uh, we can say this is based on the law of equi marginal utility only. So in this case, that the marginal utility per dollar is the same. Means every penny spent should give the same amount of satisfaction to the consumer. That is a separate law which we, uh, like we will be doing in some other class, not today. That's a separate law of economics. Now sixth one. The substitution effect deals with the change in consumption of a good due to dash. The change in income preference, change in the income, actual money income, 
you can just choose your uh, option. This was something which we discussed in the demand class. We were discussing about the elasticity of demand. So there was income elasticity, there was price elasticity. So it is something related to that. Mohammed Shafan says D. Anyone else? Prabha says A. Rajiv says D. Sunil says A. Well, the answer is D. It is the change in the price of a good relative to others. This is the substitution effect. Suppose the uh, price, if we compare the price of tea and coffee, the price of both remains the same at one point of time, then suddenly the price of um, tea goes up okay? and the price of coffee remains the same. So what will people do? Those who are buying tea may now shift to consumption of coffee. And reverse can happen is suppose the price of coffee goes, uh, like if the price of coffee goes down also, then in that case also people who were previously drinking tea will now shift to drinking of coffee. So this is substitution effect. When the price of one product that is a substitute of the other goes down, then goes down then the, the consumption of other may go up and in case the price of one product goes up, the price of uh, the other remains the same, the consumer will go towards that good. This is substitution effect. Now next is Now an individual consumes two products A and B with prices P and PB. Utility is maximized when if all income is spent, the following condition is met. A, B, C or D. This is again from this law of equimarginal utility only. But we have another class after this one now. Okay, so I won't extend. The answer to this one is C, which is marginal utility of A upon price of A is equal to marginal utility of C upon price of B and this goes on till the N units. N is the final number of units. Okay, that is the law of equimarginal utility. Now what is this? This says suppose that the price of A is dollar three and the price of B is dollar six, and the consumer is maximizing utility. If marginal utility of A is seven, it can be concluded that Majo says D. What about others? The price of B is double to that of A and the consumer is maximizing his satisfaction. A is giving 7 units of satisfaction. Now how much will B give? Asiya, Akshita, Rajiv, Anas, Prabha, Monachin, Sanubar, yes, it will be 14. Okay, simple. Now next one. There is a chart given, uh, sorry, table given and it says 
if the individual has an income of dollar thirty five and the prices of A and B are dash and dash respectively, how many units of A and B will be purchased? marginal utility of a is maximum for the third unit okay and the marginal utility of b is maximum for the first unit only so the cost of first unit of b is 5 so we can say 5 $5 and for 4 it will be Sorry, marginal utility is maximum for the uh, second unit. The consumer has to spend all his money. So 4 fives are 20, 4 into 5 for unit A. Okay. And 5 into Four for the answer is A. Renan has given the right answer. Now the class is about to be over. There are some questions left in this. Uh, there are 15 questions in all. So uh, what I'll do is uh, the other questions are not of like uh, the level which we have covered so far. So we can just leave them and. Uh, I'll be uploading some assignments this week at classletter.com. You will be informed by the coordinator about the same. So kindly do it. And please just revise what has been done with you before the next class. And we'll be meeting in the next class. That is on Thursday at uh, 8 o'clock your time. Okay. So see you all. Thanks for your time. Hope you all enjoyed today's session. Please give your feedback at the end of the class. Most of you don't give it. Please give it because it's a guiding force for us. Okay? So please give your feedback. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Good night. Have a nice week ahead.